At the end of the lesson, you are expected to analyze the concept of linguistic corpus, identify the ways of counting the number of words, and value the significance of understanding linguistic corpus in natural language processing. Before we go into the heart of natural language processing, which is really our course, we are going first to understand the foundational concepts of linguistic corpus to widen and deepen our understanding of natural language processing. So first and foremost, let's ask ourselves, what is corpus? How is it defined? So corpus or corpora, this is for singular, singular it means one, and when it is plural, it becomes corpora, okay? So let me write here, it's corpora, okay? This is very important, especially when we are talking about linguistics in natural language, language processing. So corpus or corpora is a collection of text or speech. Don't forget that it is a collection. So, but since we are dealing with natural language processing, we're going to define it formally, and it is formally defined as a large and structured machine readable texts that have been produced in a natural communicative setting. So they can be derived in different ways like text that was originally electronic. Let me write this. This is electronic, electro, electronic. Okay, the transcripts of spoken languages, transcript of spoken languages, and it could be optical character recognition and many more. So, so the best example of a corpus is a brown corpus. I'm so sure you, you've heard about this one, brown corpus. This is actually the name of the person who collected and collated all of the words. So a brown corpus, for example, is a collection of multi-million words. So these words are taken from 500, just imagine, 500 written English texts of different genres like law and politics. We have business and economics, sports, education, and other academic works, newspapers, and many more. So just name it, it's there. So let's examine this brown sentence. So we have this sentence, let's read. He stepped out into the hall, was delighted to encounter a water brother. Okay, I'll give you a few more seconds to read and internalize the sentence. Okay, so now the question is this. How many words the, does this sentence have? Okay, so if we are not going to include the punctuation marks, so again, we are not going to include the punctuation marks. So we can see and we can say that there, there are 13 words. So let us count for us to have some proofs. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen. So we have thirteen words. Okay, what about if we are going to include the punctuation mark? So then we can say that there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So we have 15 words, including the one comma and the period here at the last part of the sentence or at the end. So based on the idea that this sentence has just 15 words, including this comma and then this period, what are the situations for us to include punctuations like comma and a period in this case, right? Because basically we all know that this one and then this are not really words in its very technical sense. But then because we are studying natural language processing, then we are introduced to a different idea of 
what a word is and how a comma, a period, and other punctuation marks can be considered as words. So counting them as words may be or may depend on a certain task. Okay, so let's have um, uh, the, the cases wherein this comma and this period and other punctuation marks can be considered a sentence, I mean a, a word. Okay, the first situation is they are considered as words is when you do speech tag or speech synthesis or when you treat these marks like they are really separate words. Okay, that's the first one. What about the second one? Okay, the second one is when you are setting boundaries of this or again the second instance is that when you are setting boundaries of different ideas so we use a period for example to mark the end of a declarative or an imperative sentence so let me have the following marks period okay so a question mark we use that to suggest that a sentence is an interrogative sentence and we have exclamation point for an exclamatory sentence okay so we use a colon to introduce a series of ideas or to set off the main or introductory phrase or clause from the stems so these are or there are actually a lot of other uses for these marks like for example this one not so much for this one because we have just have um touched them but for this one there are actually a lot okay so also there are other punctuation marks like semicolon this one then we have the parenthesis okay then we have the bracket we also have the curly bracket and many more so these are actually basic lessons in linguistics i suggest you review or study them as they are very very important in our study of natural language processing okay so you have this one um, in your subject in language so if you are studying english language then you have this you always meet these punctuation marks or if you are studying another language your language for example um, whatever you are speaking or whatever whatever language you're studying then you can always see these marks of course there would be some additions to this so the third is you use punctuation marks to identify some aspects of meaning this one okay so for example, we use, let's go back to these marks again. So, for example, we use a question mark to show that we are asking. We use exclamation point to describe our emotion or to, to express our emotion like we are surprised, we are sad, or we are afraid. And there are actually more emotions, more feelings that we can use this to express them so again i suggest to review them okay so what we have just discussed is the foundation of understanding of corpora or linguistic corpora now let's go a notch higher let's consider this sentence so let's read i am uh, an artist uh, i am uh, an art artist Right, sometimes you talk to a certain person especially for example when you're working and you talk to a boss to your boss and or when you're applying for a job or to someone else that you don't know so sometimes you don't have confidence and you stutter when you talk so that's it so in this sentence we can see this one uh, and then we have this art and then you could see this one right so what do we mean when we have them so these two are actually what we call disfluences or disfluency disfluences because there are two 
So this fluency is for plural or this fluency, okay, for singular. So art is called fragment. This is fragment. Maybe you would ask me why is it called a fragment? Very simple, just the word fragment itself. It tells us that the word is broken off, okay? And a, uh, this is called a filler, okay? Filler and sometimes it is also called field process, okay? Filler or field process. And maybe you would ask me why it is called the field process because sometimes when you talk and when you run out of words or when you run out of ideas you feel that with a uh, or it could be um or um any kind of words that you could fill in just to 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 break the monotony of that pause in your sentence so i know at this point you would like to ask are influencers or influences considered words in natural language processing just like our punctuation marks okay this is a very good question actually and it's really worth this time to discuss them okay so just like the punctuation marks that consideration always depends on the application so listen very carefully as we go through the ideas about them so this is how they are considered. If we are building a speech transcription system, they are not okay, they are not considered as words, but that is just the general rule. And there is always an exception to this. So these influences or these fluences have pivotal role in speech recognition. Okay, and what what is this role and how is that so these disfluences signal the restart of an idea restart okay I know you're also guilty of this right I'm so, I'm so sure of that you lose your line of thoughts and for you to fill that space in your sentence you use a this one or it could be sometimes like this it could be um okay so while you look for other words or ideas to start or continue your utterance so in many cases it would be a different sentence you have experienced that i'm so sure so so for speech recognition they are considered as regular words again for speech recognition these fillers these broken fragments or these fragments, or in short, these disfluences, are considered as regular words. Another instance when these disfluences are considered words is in identifying a certain speaker. So this is for identification. Let me write that. Okay, so it is used to identify who is talking. I believe that you and I know that each person has his own speech or linguistic nuances. So in our circle of influence, for example, we know who is speaking even if we close our eyes. Not just because of the voice we hear, but because the way he or she, or the way he or she uses a certain expressions that are unique only to him. Or very personal to him so for example we know who is speaking um or a uh, most often when talking after all being said and done let's try this what is a corpus what are the ways of counting words what do we consider these fluences as regular words leave your answers in the comment below so we would be able to make discussions and we can learn from each other and also other people who would like to visit this channel and would like to upskill and learn. Do not forget to subscribe, like, and share. Please click the bell button to be notified every time we have a new session. See you in the next lesson.